No doubt about it. No doubt about it. All women are loose cannons. All right? And and you and, and guys, you gauge them on your ability to be able to deal with the recoil of that cannon. All right? Tunnel vision. Like I'm, it ain't no distractions. I don't see nobody but her and what yeah. we got going on. Like, that's why I said earlier, her goal is my goal, and that's just what it is. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, we building an empire out here. Yeah. So it's really no distractions. I'm not worried about nobody else. Yeah. Well, I want to start first, but if you don't mind, yes. I just want to comment. I'm loving what I'm hearing on this stage. Yes. When oh, you were talking awesome. about your soul, I was going to show it to my husband, and I was like, boy, you said that to me. That was your wedding vows to me. <laughs> he was just like, not only are you my soulmate, but you my soul. And I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> I know you want to watch this next video, but listen, if you are an entrepreneur, business coach, business consultant, or a small business owner who has a story and wants to learn how to create multiple streams of income from your story, I need you to text me right now. My book to 646-687-4152. That is my personal number. I have been an author for over 12 years. I've written 10 books. Four of them have been bestsellers, and I've sold over 100,000 books, but I've also helped a lot of my clients take their expertise and put it into a story, then create multiple streams of income from that. So I wanna help you do the same thing. So text my book to 646-687-4152. All right, all right, let's go back to the video. Congratulations to all those who joined the MAP program and the Pay for Purpose program. Um, excited for you. Uh, this panel is about to be lit, y'all. Um, we are about to talk about marriage and money. So. Um, you know, a lot of people say marriages fail because of communication, money, and of course, I believe one of the core reasons is actually um, misalignment of purpose. And so we have actually three couples coming up led by another married man. His wife couldn't be here to facilitate with him because she's actually, her, her and her son are down in Florida and he's selling his, uh, his uh, best-selling children's book down in Florida. So uh, Ash Cash will be leading this panel um, without uh, his beautiful wife, Amina. But um, Ash Cash is uh, like my big brother, man. Um, we've been in alignment for so long, especially in terms of our money mindset, our love for uh, Reverend Ike. Um, he is the host of Inside the Vault, and this is going to be an Inside the Vault episode. How many Inside the Vault watchers out there? Right? So as you can see, Inside the Vault changed its, uh, its um, backdrop because it was never really about being inside an actual vault. It was about getting into the vault of the minds of the people who were actually on the show. And so today we're going to have uh, three different um, uh, families at different stages of their marriages sharing their journey with uh, you because I think many of us want to be in perfect alignment with our partner uh, when in that time comes. For those of you who got that green sticker, it's all right, your time is coming, all right? <laughs> So we want to learn how to identify that partner because sometimes, how many of you made some bad choices in the dating world, okay? Out of misalignment because we were led by the two eyes instead of being led by our first eye, which is our third eye, being led by vibration, okay? Vibrational match is more important than visual match. Now, Ash Cash and I um, have went on to uh, create the money reprogram. Many of you were part of that. Uh, and we literally, Gigi was here, uh, and uh, we had folks who literally made money before they actually left that event, right? That was the whole intent of the event, to see how quickly we could manifest money by packaging somebody's skill sets. Um, in terms of Rich and Righteous, the man behind the curtain with Rich and Righteous was Ash Cash. Ash Cash was my book publishing coach with his best-selling book publishing blueprint. And, um, and recently, uh, actually uh, last month, we crossed a quarter million dollars in sales for a rich and righteous book. Yeah, off of a book. Most books don't even do $5,000 and we crossed a quarter million dollars in sales off of Rich and Righteous in just two years. And that's all thanks to his mindset and his uh, knowledge and expertise around book publishing, all right? So uh, with that, um, th please help me welcome to the stage my brother, Ash Cash. All right, y'all, y'all feel it? Y'all good? All right, so we're going to talk about love and wealth. Because I'm hearing that there is a direct correlation between who you're with and the size of your pocketbook or your wallet or your bank account. 
right? So we, so we have a, a, a great panel, but I know we had lunch now. And so I need to reset the room. Can, can I ask everybody to stand up for me real quick? I got to reset the room. Because if, if you don't know me, right, if you don't know me, I feed off of energy. So if the energy ain't right, I can't, I can't do what I do. So I need the energy right. And so we're going to do, do call and response, right? I'm going to say some words. I just need you to say them back to me. But I need you, I need you to say it with some energy because I need to feel you. And if I feel you, then, then, then we can go on with the show. Y'all ready? All right, let's start. I am a wealth creator. That was okay. That was okay. That was okay. I'm, you know what I mean? But I, but I, want, I want more energy than that. Y'all ready? I am a wealth creator. Abundance is my birthright. I attract loving relationships effortlessly. Everything I need, I already have. I am willing to accept the best that life has to offer. I am worth loving and I accept that love in return. Everything is working for my greater good. Unconditional love flows freely and I am open to receiving in it. Wealth is in me, around me, and available to me always. I am loved more than I could ever imagine. My self-worth and net worth are building every day. My self-worth and net worth are building every day. That's the one. Yo, my self-worth and net worth are building every day. One more time. Yo, my self-worth and net worth are building every day. I believe in unlimited possibilities. All right, round of applause for yourselves. Round of applause for yourselves. All right, we ready, we ready, we ready, we ready, we ready, we ready. All right, keep that same energy, keep that same energy. Keep that same energy. All right, first up, I have Dr. Boyce and Dr. Alicia Watkins. Dr. Boyce is a PhD in finance. Dr. Alicia is also a licensed therapist and full professor of social work. They are in the building. Next, we have Shannon and Shirley Austin. Married for over 25 years, relationship influencers and mindset coaches in the building. And then last but not least, we have Ratik and Lex DeWitt. They're serial entrepreneurs who help people leverage other people's money to live abundant life that they deserve. We have the DeWitts in the building. Round of applause, round of applause. Let's go. All right, so uh, I'm, I'm excited about, about this. So first of all, I got to do my Inside the Vault uh, intro, right, because we're going we're gonna to put this on the vault, right? So welcome to another awesome episode of Inside the Vault with Ash Cash, the greatest money mindset show on the planet. I'm excited about uh, this interview because, um, you know, I've been seeing a lot of relationship advice lately a lot of it, um, where people are talking about what men like, what women like, what men want, what women want. Last time I checked, nobody asked me, but it's all good. Um, and so what I wanted to do is really want to bring in um, a, a, a you know, various amount of experience here um, to really just talk about love. But more importantly, does, does love have a direct correlation with money? Um, and so I'm going to start, uh, and, and I'm going to kind of just throw it out to the whole panel. Um, what is your thoughts on love and wealth? Is there a direct correlation between the two? Anybody can start. I mean, well, is my, is my mic on? Everybody hear me? Okay. Yeah, I mean, love and money is definitely tied to each other. I mean, we want to be successful in life. Like, being married to Boyce, um, 
the status quo wouldn't work for me anymore. Mm. It's like I wanted to have greatness in my life. And of course, I want to have greatness in my business, yeah. you know, the business that I run. In order to do that, I know I had to overcome any challenges that were presented in front of me. Mm -hmm. And I also being married to boys, this is my second marriage, mm -hmm. right? So, you know, the status quo wasn't working for me anymore in the past. And, I'm, you know, I really want greatness in my life and I want greatness in my marriage. Mm -hmm. And in order to do that, um, in order to be successful in terms of wealth, I knew I had to also be successful in terms of the relationships in my life. And so it was so important for whatever challenges that I have, whatever challenges that we have in our, in our relationship, to be able to overcome that. Mm -hmm. In order to overcome that, I have to realize that there are some challenges. But on the other end of that challenge is greatness and abundance. I mean, wealth, having wealth and having a wonderful love life is related to that abundance. Yeah. And on the other side of challenges is abundance for me. Absolutely, mm -hmm. love that, love that. Yeah. Round of applause. Yeah, the, yeah the, the connection between love and money, it's, it's interesting that people ask that question because when, you, when you've lived a little bit, you learn that they're deeply connected because those are two areas in which you make the most significant investments in your life. You know, love is an investment just like money, just the same way I invest in a stock or invest in a business. When, there's nothing that can, that's more risky than investing your heart and your life and your soul into something. Mm -hmm. And we understand that because we've had investments that did not work out. Right, right. <laughs> Sometimes the whole market crashes. <laughs> and, uh, and there's a lot of pain associated with that. And uh, if I had to compare the pain of a busted relationship with the pain of losing some money, I the relationship was far greater uh, in pain than, than losing money. Money, you just get back, but <clears throat> that busted relationship can be 10 times more traumatic. So, um, so there, there is a deep relationship and, or connection between the two. And the, uh, what I would say in, in, in summary on that would be uh, that typically wealth comes during times of peace. Mm. And when you're working together. Wait, don't miss that, I'm sorry. That's a big one. Say that one more time. You got to run that back. That's a bar. Yeah. Well, wealth, wealth comes in times of peace. Yeah. Uh, wealth gets destroyed in times of war. Mm. If you ever want to see this, uh, go look at what happens to a family that's been devastated by divorce. Mm. Uh, the divorce attorneys have all your money at that point. Yeah. There's a whole <clears throat> uh, multi-billion dollar industry wow. that's built off making money from broken families and couples going to court fighting with each other and all that. And when you're fighting, you can't you're not winning. You can't be building while you're fighting. If you, or if you look at old videos of what, what Europe looked like after World War II, everything was destroyed. There was no prosperity, right? right? Because war is a wealth destroyer. So uh, to summarize that, if you are in love, if you choose to make that investment in love, you have to manage that investment very carefully because it can make that difference between prosperity and uh, devastation of poverty. Just ask any single parent that's struggling to pay the bills or, yeah. or any single father that can't pay the child support. How you manage your love life is deeply connected to what happens in your financial life. Love it, love it, love it, yeah. You know, the Bible says that we should leave an inheritance for our children, right? And we're here at the Generational Wealth Conference. Yeah. So we talk about um, legacy and inheritance. Legacy is what we create here on earth. And the inheritance is what we leave. And in order to do that successfully, we have to be aligned in love and we have to be aligned as it pertains to our finances. So it's definitely a connection. No, I love that. Love that. Yeah. Wow. That's good. That's all good. Um, uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm a Christian by faith and uh, use the Bible as kind of my rule and guide for life. And um, in that book, uh, a good friend of mine calls it the good book. In that book, uh, it, it says, what profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? Ooh, that's the one. Right, so you, you have to then now, okay, what, what, what soul, what are you talking about? Is, it, is this, you know, we speak in terms of soul being this essence and this thing that is internal, but she is my soul, mm. right? Because in that same book, it says, uh, it's not good for man to be alone. That means like I'm not going to be at my best mm. as much as I am a sovereign human being and my soul is sturdy and stout. Mm. I'm still not my best mm. until I have a completion mm. and surely is my completion. Wow. So what profit a man to gain the whole world and lose this? Mm. It's not worth it. Mm. The one. 
Go ahead, Lex. No pressure. No pressure. I mean, y'all hit everything on the head. I'm speechless. I'm like, yeah. Uh, I'm going to definitely say that love and wealth definitely correlates because your partner is your biggest investment and like y'all hit on it. Yeah. Um, not having a solid household, there's no way you can succeed like in this world. So um, I say all the time to my friends, like you definitely want to take your time with who you decide to be your partner because that could make or break you. And if you want to be wealthy, you better be with a partner who wants the same thing. <laughs> like Lex said, I mean, I think y'all have a wealth of wisdom and knowledge. Um, but what I want to say is like, overall, I think just having the same goal, yeah. you know, having the same alignment, like it's crazy. Cause when we first met, we sat down in front of my bed and talked about everything we wanted to do before we even really knew each other. Mm. And that first night was like, yep, this it. Yeah. Yeah. So I think um, just overall having the right alignment, having the right goal in mind is the key. Yeah. Yeah. And I love it. And so, uh, Shannon and Shirley, right? So. Uh, you guys are about to embark on 26 years of marriage, right? So you've been, been married for 25 years, been together 27 years. Um, what is the key to a lasting relationship, a lasting and loving relationship? Tequila. <laughs> <laughs> Cause she crazy. <laughs> hey, listen, no doubt about it. No doubt about it. All women are loose cannons, <laughs> right? And, and, you, and, and guys, you gauge them on your ability to be able to deal with the recoil of that cannon, <laughs> right? Right, if you can't handle it, get you, get you a smaller, you know, right, right? But, um, but what I, one of the things that I have learned, it, and it took, it, took some, it took a lot of hell, it took a lot of hard work to come to this understanding, but um, I, I, I now understand that she, who Shirley is and how she's wired. We utilize the DISC model of human behavior to understand our clients, but in me trying to understand my clients, it helped me to understand my wife. And so there were times when I would uh, we used to own a dessert company, and um, I'm a high C. So if you know high C's, that recipe, you got to be on point with, with everything, every step in the thing. And Shirley's a high S. She don't care. She just flicking flour and <laughs> sugar and just, just however. And I'm like, we got to follow this recipe. <laughs> and she's like, okay, you know, sugar is sugar. I said, no, <laughs> sugar is not sugar. You just can't be putting any sugar, right? And so... We, uh, that would cause some of the most heated arguments. The proper uh, uh, recipe, right? Following the recipe. And once I uh, discovered how she was wired, mm. now it became, she wasn't doing anything to me now. She wasn't trying to tear down the fabric of the company that we were trying to build. <laughs> she was just being who she was, mm. who she is. Yeah. And once I was able to recognize who she was, yeah. And accept that, yep, not try to change it, not yep. trying to shift it. Our marriage literally yeah. took off. Yeah. Relax. Yeah. Took off. Yeah. And so for me, that understanding, and when we're coaching, the, the, one of the biggest problems is that people are not understanding who they're married to and yes. not willing to accept yeah, it. I love that. Yeah. 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 That so and, true. And I, I just want to add to that um, two, two things. Understanding what your job is right in marriage and your job is not to protect your heart but we get in these relationships and in marriage and we're holding on to us and trying to protect us mm -hmm. my job is to protect Shannon's heart mm -hmm. Shannon's job is to protect my heart mm -hmm. so if everybody's doing their job that's how we win mm -hmm. um, the second thing is what you know one of the biggest that every client that have has ever come to us the one thing they have in common is a communication challenge, right? Yeah. And so we realized, man, we have some clients who have amazing communication skills, yeah. but they're saying they can't communicate. Mm. So the problem, guys, isn't that you guys are having a communication problem, period. It is that you are not complying mm. to what you are hearing. Mm. 
right? And so we had to get to the point. I had to get to the point. Listen, we spent like 11 years in hell. I had to get to the point where I was like, something is wrong. And I had to look at myself and say, why are we having communication issues? Well, it's, it's not the communication. I'm not doing what he's asking of me. Right. What, are you making faces? <laughs> I'm just agreeing. I'm agreeing. So, so, so I'm in so, agreement. Yeah. So I could go on and on yeah. all day about, you know, nah, what keeps you together. That. But yeah. Lex and Ratik, let me, let me, let me go to y'all real quick. Um, as a young couple, right, still in your 20s, um, together seven years, married for four years. Um, there is a lot of new age wisdom uh, that your generation, <laughs> you know, uh, is in part taking upon us. Um, but like, as a, as a younger couple uh, that has a lot of access, right? So, you know, I'm, I'm in my 40s. Um, I've been with my wife 20 years, been married 15 years. Um, and I thank God Instagram wasn't around when we met, to be <laughs> honest, right? And so with all of the distractions, I'm sure, you know, people are in your DMs all the time. Y'all make money. Y'all successful. Um, how do you keep a relationship solid with all of the distractions that are happening right now uh, in, 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 in the world? Gotcha. To me, it's just overall, like, Lex is like, we got a lot in common. Yeah. Tunnel vision. Like, I, it ain't no distractions. I don't see nobody but her and what yeah. we got going on. Yeah. Like, that's why I said earlier, her goal is my goal, and that's just what it is. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, we building an empire out here. Yeah. So it's really no distractions. I'm not worried about nobody else. Yeah. 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 I'm really trying to think of how, but we really don't have no distractions. Yeah. Like, um, when you're so focused and aligned with what you got going on internally and in your household, you don't even see nothing else for real. So. Yeah. Um, we, we just stay focused. <laughs> yeah. Stay um in your lane and stay focused. That's how you handle distractions. Yeah, yeah. And and and, and being that you guys are like serial entrepreneurs, right? Because sometimes distraction isn't only other people, right? Distraction could be you know you know uh too focused on the business and not focused on the relationship or you know going out or one you know, one alone time, right? And right. so there, there are other forms of distractions. How do you, you know, do those? Now do, you do got those, us. Yeah, do those even <laughs> come up Now you got or? us on that one. Yeah. Um, yeah, we've had many instances where we're like, okay, we haven't dated, we haven't gave each other quality time, we too focus on our business. So yeah. we just, um, one of us comes to each other and say, okay, now it's time for us to take a date. Let's travel, let's take some quality time together. Yeah. And it's just a form of communication. We don't get mad at each other or anything yeah. like that. We just remind each other like, okay, now it's time for us to spend time together. Or And we know what we got ourselves into as well. Like us both being entrepreneurs, we have that common denominator. Yeah. So we know what to expect when it comes to the life we chose and the career we chose and we're okay with that. Yeah. Um, but we definitely make the time to spend time together and you know yeah, yeah. i love that i love that i love that dr boyce dr alicia yes um and so dr boyce your first marriage um dr alicia this is your second marriage mm -hmm. um give us some advice on those who um you know obviously dr boyce is old i'm just playing. obviously dr <laughs> dr boyce waited a long time to get married uh -huh. um, and then you, you know, you, you started over. What advice do you have for people who are, you know, waiting to find that right partner or starting over? Well, I want to start first, but if you don't mind, yes. I just want to comment. I'm loving what I'm hearing on this stage. Yes. When oh, you were talking awesome. about your soul, I was going to show it to my husband and I was like, boy, you said that to me. That was your wedding vows to me. He was just like, not only are you my soulmate, but you my soul. And I was like, oh my God. So I really enjoy what you said. And I love what you said down here about um, prioritizing your life yeah. because I, I relate to all of these questions, yeah. by the way. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you know, it's just, I have to decide to put myself first yeah. and then my marriage and then the kids yeah. and then my business. Yeah. And it ends up being the opposite. You know, I put myself last and our marriage last. So I love what you were saying about uh, prioritizing. But I'm sorry. I but just no, wanted good, to comment good, on good. that because yeah. that was just really beautiful. Go ahead. Boyce, you want to start about? No, well, you know, I, I, I'll say this. Um, thoughts that come to mind in terms of what you are saying. I, 
you know, I, I decided a long time ago that I wasn't going to let nobody tell me how to live my life or what, what I was supposed to do and when and all that. Um, <laughs> I wasn't living on anybody's timeline. I said, I'm living on God's timeline. And, uh, and I felt like there were things I needed to do. Um, I, when I proposed to my wife, and I took her back to this place that we met in 1993 when I saw her across the room. And, uh, and I, I wrote in my journal that night that uh, today I met the most beautiful woman in the world. Wow. And I still have that. I was, I just, I was able to show it to her. Um, you know, it, it, I told her, I said, I married you not because I needed to be married to someone. I married you because you're you. Mm. That's it. Like, yeah. that was, you know. Yeah. <clears throat> and, and so uh, I'm, I'm a big believer that when it comes to relationship choices, a huge mistake that I think a person could make is to do things because people are telling them what, how, to, how, to, how to live your life. They're not living your life. you got to live with that person and in that situation. So um, I was determined to do things the way I wanted to do it, and, uh, and I'm okay with that. And, uh, and so marriage was interesting because uh, I evaluated this investment <clears throat> the way I would evaluate any investment. This is going to be the biggest investment of my life. I'm literally investing my life right, <laughs> in this right. person. So, so even though I, I'd known Alicia a long time and I knew she was a great buddy, I didn't know what she'd be like as a mate or as a spouse. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we just talked the way we normally did, just maybe had different conversations in terms of me getting to know more about her. And, and one thing I will say that I paid attention to was how she treated her ex-husband. Mm -hmm. Because if you're abusing this man and trying to destroy this man, then... I'm next on the list. Wow, wow, you know, wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, no, and, 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 and so if, if she had been, you know, I want to destroy him and ruin him and cut his balls off and yeah. take, his, take his dog and get, yeah. you know, then I'd, I'd be like, uh-uh, no, 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 yeah. no, uh-uh. Yeah. Fr I'm friend zoning you, lady. <laughs> so, um, so it, you know, I, I think that, that if, it, at least in my process, it was like, yeah. okay, let's take our time. Let's think it through. Um, also, you hit different stages of life and you realize, you know, uh, I, I see guys that get older and they, they get in their 50s and they think they're still in their 20s mm -hmm. and you want to live like that. And the thing is, I, I, I remember seeing a Thank video you. from a nurse in the stroke ward mm -hmm. who talked about all these like handsome, wealthy black men mm -hmm. that had had strokes. Mm -hmm. and, and, they were, and she's like, well, where's your wife? And they would say, oh, well, you know, I was a player. I wanted to be a player. But you're 60 years old, bro. Uh, you're, not, yeah. you're not a kid no <laughs> right, more. Right, you know, you right. got to kind of make a life plan that matches, you know, where you try to be. So, yeah. uh, so, I, so, I, so I, I was happy to marry Alicia because I know she's a wonderful nurturer. Yeah. Um, I knew it was the right move for the next stage of my life. And also, uh, I guess as a businessman, I definitely didn't want to have a wife that would embarrass me. Mm. You know, and, and I, because I, I, I would meet women, and they, you know, black women, y'all beautiful. Y'all the prettiest things ever. And, uh, and, and, but sometimes the package can look better than what's on the inside, <laughs> if you know what I mean. You know, so all these things kind of came, came to mind, uh, you know, when I made that move. So that, those were, that was my thought process. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah, I mean, starting over, I had no one, never in a million years that I ever think that I would be married to boys. Never in a million years that I ever think I'd even be on the stage talking to all of these individuals right now. I did not do the, you have to understand is just that I was just living my life and knowing that I wanted something better for myself. Yeah. And I just trusted that process. So you gotta really trust that process. And I just, I never, w First of all, I just want to say, I had no idea how popular Boyce was because yeah. <laughs> we weren't even friends on Facebook. Yeah. I had yeah. no social media presence at all. He was just my buddy from college yeah. that I would call all the time. Yeah. I would always reach out to him. And Boyce is not, he's very modest. He never told me like how successful he was. He was just telling me how things were going in his <laughs> life. Like we never, he never told me. Yeah. I didn't know anything about the black business school or yeah. any of that kind yeah. of stuff. I just wanted to know about who he was as a person. Yeah. And eventually he was my favorite friend. Mm -hmm. We had a fun time together. We went on vacations together. Mm -hmm. And then I saw this other side of boys. Mm -hmm. And I was like, whoa, <laughs> who's this other side of him that I didn't know was there? And then it really like formed this really good love relationship. Yeah. And then I friended him on Instagram and Facebook. Come on, Instagram. Come on, Instagram. Like, what the heck? And then my, my kids were like, he's got a blue check. And I was like, what does a blue check mean? I had no idea what this meant. They were like, and he's commenting on my kids 
page and they're like, why is a blue check commenting on your page? You know, so the kids got all popular yeah. because so I had no idea. Never in a million years would I ever think that I would quit my private practice to have my own practice. Mm. So, I mean, the love and money goes together Absolutely. so tight. Yeah. And, yeah. And, and and now I don't have to, I'm working at a private practice. If yeah. anyone knows, you don't have to pay the owners of that practice half of the money you bring in. Yeah. You know, so if I'm making $200 an hour, I have to give them $100. Yeah. Now it's my $200 right. an hour. Right. So it's just really great, you know, yeah. to have Come on, ownership. Like Come on, ownership. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah, yeah, and I love that. And, and, and just a quick tidbit, though, right? <laughs> um, there's no ash cash without voice. So uh, I was a banker. It was in 2010. I left my job as a banker, and I wrote my first book, and Boyce Watkins was the first person ever to interview me uh, over, wow. over a decade ago. Right, so round of applause, right? Yeah. So, 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 you know, with, without, without voice being, he didn't know me, I, I, he, he didn't know me from anywhere. Uh, I was just like reaching out and I was like, man, I see you have this platform. It was AOL at the time, he was interviewing yeah. at AOL, so y'all know, long time right, ago. long time ago. So I just wanna say thank you publicly. Yeah. I, I've, I've told you this behind the scenes, but I wanna say thank you publicly uh, for even giving me an opportunity because like, I mean, here we are, right? You know, so thank you. I appreciate that. Um, and so this is for everybody, right? Um, how do you build wealth with your partner, right? So for me, you know, as a married man, um, again, been, been together with my wife 20 years, been married 15 years. Um, it ain't easy, I'll be honest, right? So sometimes, you know, what? what remember uh, Jimmy Cozier? Sometimes I love her. Sometimes I love her not. I ain't let her go. She's all I got. Sometimes she Sing nags Ash. me. Y'all know that? Sometimes she <laughs> nags me. Y'all know that song? There. And Don't complains a lot. Anything. No? All right, whatever. All right. So keep, maybe, keep maybe I'm sure my age, right? <laughs> we enjoy the show. But, e but either way, either way, um, it ain't easy, right? It ain't easy. Sometimes we are, um, you know, like bumping heads. Sometimes we love each other. Some, right? And so, um, but we understand, like, you know, we understand the importance of, of our relationship and communication. So we always work it out. And so how do you guys do it? Like, how do you build wealth, you know, with your partner? Um, no, you go. No, you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's hard. <laughs> <laughs> um. So we started our first business together when we were, I was 22 and Tika was 25, I think. Yeah. So it was, in the beginning, it was cool. Like when we first made our first $10,000, we thought we was rich. <laughs> like we had so much fun. But then as we grew up, it got more complicated because the more money we was making, the more problems we was having. We got to grow a business. We got to hire a team. We got to have leadership roles. It wasn't just like, you know, just me and you rocking out. So it became complicated, and I think the biggest thing was accepting that we were naturally good at certain things when it comes to our business, and we just let each other shine in what we were naturally good at. So um, we don't try to overstep each other's toes and, yeah, just communicate. There's been times where we fussing in business, and then we lay down in bed, and we not talking in bed because we don't fuss in business. We're like, look, this got to stop. Let's leave it at the office. But um, it's just, yeah, so, Having a boundary between, okay, this is business work. We still got to respect each other because we are spouses. But um, what happens in business, you know, we leave that at the office. When we come home and we have a quality time and stuff like that, then we got to get out that mode for real. Love it. You want me to, you want me to add addition to that? <laughs> okay. Um, and what was the question one more time to make sure I hit it on the head? Because she said a lot. Yeah, so. How do you build wealth in a relationship? Yeah, how, how do you build wealth? In the, okay. Yeah, how do you so, build wealth as a partner? With us, you know, being, being younger, we talked a, a lot of times about us setting ourselves up for the future. Yeah. Um, and we kind of had a common goal around real estate, common goal around stocks. Um, and that's always one thing we said, okay, if we make X amount of money, let's put this in stocks. Yeah. And we talked about that a lot. Yeah. You know, uh, this will be the first year we're diving into commercial real estate, but we've been buying stocks and crypto and a bunch of other investments for a while now. So I think overall, like she said, just communicating consistently about what your goal is and revisiting that goal. Um, so yeah. And so, so if I so I hear you, if I hear you correctly, 
uh, it's important to have that plan, right? To have a plan That's. together. Um, and then even within the disagreements within the plan, knowing what role you play in the business and the plan to make sure that the, that the plan keeps moving forward. Exactly. Prime example, she's great with marketing, you know, uh, communicating effectively to people from, you know, about X, Y, Z point. Yeah. I'm a great leader. I help build a team. Yeah. So it's like we know what strengths and weaknesses each other have and kind of position ourselves to, to, to move forward with those things. Yeah. Love that, love that. One of, one of the things that for Shannon and I, it, it was getting to the point where we understood our relationship with mm. money. Mm. Um, because we didn't have a healthy relationship with money. Yeah. And now we know that money is not about numbers. Mm. It's about your values mm -hmm. and your priorities. Yes. I mean, back in 2006, 2008, something like that, we were gifted $80,000, just blew it, mm -hmm. blew it, right? Just not knowledgeable and educated. And then because we were afraid mm -hmm. to talk about money, mm -hmm. that didn't help, right? So just building the foundation of, like they said, communicating, how do I see money? Mm -hmm. How do you see money? Mm -hmm. How can we make how we see money effective mm -hmm. to help build our wealth in our family? Mm -hmm. And then, like, listen, we weren't opening bills, right, right. <laughs> all of that. Yeah, yeah. You know, we weren't, I was swiping the car, just <laughs> hoping it would go through, not wow. talking to him, yeah. right? And we're just seeing couples, just, like, they're literally doing that. Yeah. It's like, no, you really have to communicate. Once we break down that wall of fear, yeah. I'm telling you, yeah. it's no limit. Yeah. No, I love it. Money doesn't solve marriage problems. So, so the more money you continue to make is not going to necessarily make your marriage a better marriage, Ooh, right? See. And so, so what I've discovered is to surround myself with two things, people that understand marriage mm. and people that understand money. Mm. And the richest man in Babylon is so interesting. Um, uh, I forget... Um, uh, the, the, I forget the names, but you know, one of the characters was going, was came into some money and was wanted to invest it, but was investing with somebody that didn't know what they were doing, mm -hmm. and then ended up losing all of what he had, you know, what he was gifted. Mm -hmm. And and so when you take that, uh, one of the biggest problems that we are finding with uh, how, how many how many seven figure earners do we have in the room? Just raise your hand. Potential seven. You, how many want to be seven-figure earners, right? <laughs> right. Oh, all right. But so, but we have a much less uh, uh, actual seven-figure and eight-figure earners, right? You, if 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 you don't get this, like, how many of you all have business coaches? Raise your hand. How many of you all are part of Julian's uh, community? So you're getting coaching there, right? Uh, uh, how many of you all have of financial planning or a financial planner in your life, right? Amazing, wonderful. Now, how many of how, how many of you all have relationship coaches? Mm. See, yeah. there mm. you go. You have no village out there to help guide you. Wow. And you stuck on stupid. Wow. <laughs> You're trying to figure it out yourself, and you cannot figure out marriage. And that level of serious relationship, you don't even have to be married. You could just be life partners, you could, whatever. But when you get to that serious stage, when you're not just dating, you're not just boyfriend and girlfriend, but this is serious and I want to do life with you, you have to surround yourself with a village very quickly. Three people you need in your life, right? Couples. You need a, a mentor couple. You need a couple that's going to pour into you and that you look up to and you revere and respect. Yeah. You need a peer couple. You need a couple that you can tell, hey, your shit stinks and my shit stinks. Mm. Let's get that shit together, mm. right? And then you need a couple that you can pour into. Mm. So what that does is it creates a dynamic flow in your relationship. Anything that does not give and receive dies. Ooh. Yeah, flow. Right? Yeah. Anything that is, it, it becomes stagnant. Mm. And so if you want a dynamic flowing uh, a life, then you create the kind of, uh, you, you put around you the kind of resources that will create that dynamic flow in your life. And you'll look up and you'll be making money and not know it. Mm -hmm. 
You'll be wealthy and never, you, you never really focused on how did we get here? Yeah. And it'll be because it'll be because you surrounded yourself with the right kind of people in the right areas. Oh, I love that. Mm -hmm. Kind of applause. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. yeah, that's powerful. That is good. No, I mean, I'm, I'm, what I'm hearing is just wonderful. It's almost like if, Boyce, if you were walking down the street and I just jumped out and scared you, and you'd be like, oh, God, I'm scared, versus having a coach or someone to say, hold on a second, if when you're walking down the street, someone from around that corner is going to jump out and say, boo, and you need to know how to deal with it. That's what having a coach would do or having a mentor yeah. would be, okay, as we're going along in our relationship, what would be the potential challenges? Because remember, great relationships have challenges. Yeah. If you just want to be ordinary, you're never going to have a challenge. But to be great, you have to be able to overcome that challenge. And that's what having like a coach and all of that is so important because they have to say, hold on, if you're walking down that street and you know I'm going to be there and I'm going to say boo, you're not going to be scared anymore. You're going to know what's going to happen because so many of challenges that we have in our life is unexpected. You didn't even know. You're like, how do I deal with this? And to have someone else to be there to say, I've been there before. Not even just in your relationship, in your business, for sure, because I had so many challenges in my business. But it's been nice to have like a good community to help me. Yeah. Yeah, you know, <clears throat> it's interesting when you talk about building wealth in a relationship. I visually picture like being inside a house mm -hmm. and then yeah. saying, I want to put wealth in this house. Mm -hmm. I want to bring in fancy furniture, mm -hmm. antiques, statuettes, mm -hmm. you know, cash, all this stuff in the house. So that obviously means that if you want to build the wealth and protect the wealth in the house, you got to invest in the house, mm. right? If the house is not stable and, 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 and soundly structured, <clears throat> then you're going to lose all the wealth. When there's a hurricane or a flood or a rainstorm, it's going to destroy everything that you put in that house. So investing, when you find a relationship that's, that's worth it for you, invest heavily in that relationship. Mm. Uh, they talked about marriage coaching. I, I, I sought out not just marriage coaching, but just relationship coaching. Mm -hmm. I would just talk to my therapist and say, how can I be less of an asshole when I get mad? Yeah. <laughs> you know, just little things like, how, yes. how, do, how, do, I, how do I deal? <laughs> seriously, like, how do I deal with this person that's just made me so mad? How do I handle this without destroying the relationship and burning a bridge? Because yeah. those were my triggers. We all, we, the trauma is high, you know. Yeah. And so um, I would encourage you to understand that, that generally quality of life is measured in three key areas, and that's health, wealth, and relationships. Physical and mental health, very important. If you don't take care of your health while you're building all this money, you're going to lose all your money paying the doctors and the pharmacists and the far, big pharma. They're going to take all that money back. Um, your relationships, if you have great relationships with the right people, like people similar to the people in this room, then your wealth will naturally grow. Uh, if you have the wrong relationships, your wealth will ultimately be destroyed. Uh, I know I've seen rappers that were on their way on at the peak of their career, then they get shot because they were hanging with their friend who was selling dope and bad things happen that way. So, uh, so ultimately, uh, I would encourage you to really understand that all those things fit together, not just in a uh, theoretical way, not just in a feel-good way, but in a very real way. If you ever want to see uh, what happens, how wealth can go bad, uh, look at some of the examples you might just see in media. Look at Bill Cosby and the, uh, the, the fact that he was on his way to becoming a billionaire. Now he may actually die with a, a completely destroyed family legacy with almost no money. Well, why? Well, because he had a lot of the wrong relationships. I'm not judging what happened in that room. That's up to you to decide. But we know that some mistakes had to be made along the way because this man might die broke. So... Connect it all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and how do you keep, at, you know, uh, as a couple, right? So, you know, you should, you should be whole. And then when you come together, uh, there's this interdependence, right, that mm -hmm. happens when you become a, a couple. Um, but how do you maintain your independence? Like, how do you maintain you as an individual within a relationship? I'm going to definitely start this one off. Yes, sir. <laughs> So, I'm from the South. I'm a country boy. Southern hospitality, super sweet. She's from up north, Brick City, New Jersey. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Building. I think that, that's the story right there. Uh-oh. Look, so, say less. That's it. We get it. We get it. <laughs> but, but make a long story short, 
when we used to talk back and forth about, let's say a disagreement came in the picture, right? Yeah. She was quick to respond, mm. which made her, which made me feel like she was right. Because mm. she was so quick to answer. I'm over here like, uh, I'm still trying to think about what the hell we talking about. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, and um, just a moment of transparency and being vulnerable. Like I lost myself back in 2016. I was kind of like, like, damn, I'm stupid. You know, I don't know. I don't know anything because she just always had a quick response and just, you know, and I'm like, damn, OK. <laughs> but make a long story short, I realized over time that, you know, like my word is just as strong as hers. I just got to believe that, mm -hmm. you know. So, um, uh, yeah, I think overall just believing in yourself yeah. is the biggest key there. Like you, you do have a voice. What you think and what you feel makes sense. You got to believe it. Yeah. 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 I think you got to I think you got to stand in the power of who you are. Um, um, for, for the longest time when Shirley and I met, my confidence was in the tank. I, I had gone through a, a, a divorce and, and um, didn't value myself very highly at all. She would say stuff like, look in the mirror and say these affirmations, <laughs> <laughs> you know? And, um, and, uh, and I, would, I would stand in the mirror and, and, and I, would, I would just, just be gazing and saying, <laughs> it felt so stupid to me it's not to stupid. be, you are tough, you are strong, you are invincible. I felt, I, I didn't feel, right? And, 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 and let me say that, that my confidence didn't come. My, my, my assuredness in who I am as a black man did not come until I had my son. Mm. And uh, I had him, uh, Jelani, um, um, like, he's amazing. Yeah. He's beautiful. Yeah. And he looks just like me. Yeah. Yep. So how can I be flawed if he is perfect? Wow. Uh -huh. yeah. 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 How, how is the gift giver? Right. Uh, uh, how does the gift supersede the gift giver? Mm, yeah. And it was at that point that I decided not to care about anybody or any, what she had to say about me, what anybody had to say about me. I was solid with who I am. Yeah. But then I still had to evolve in that. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I just came to the awareness. Yeah. Now I had to develop that and understand that to the point you can't tell me shit now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm all right. <laughs> I'm all right, Doc. Doc, I'm all right. I'm all right. <laughs> Anybody else want to tackle that? Yeah, I mean, that's so interesting. I think for Boyce and I, it's the opposite because I have a PhD. He has a PhD. I was very well successful at my university. I'm mm -hmm. a full professor of social work, mm -hmm. and he's all established in his career with his PhD. So both of us coming together, the question is more like, how do we blend together? Mm -hmm. Because I was just like, here's how I do things. And I don't know if you know, Boyce is a joggernaut. Mm -hmm. Like, I have to learn to let him just be a joggernaut. In the mornings, when he gets up, he don't want anyone talking to him. He doesn't want to bother him. He's like, I got to see what the stock market's doing. I got to do all this. And so I can't, I just know, I just learned not to bother him in the morning. Maybe around 6 p.m., I'll peep in his office. <laughs> I'll peep in his office and be like, you want to eat dinner with me? Because <laughs> he doesn't want to be bothered. But I know that he's, because I know his purpose in life. I know he's on this mission. And I just step out of his way. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. She is lying. That's true. <laughs> that is so true, though. This lady's full of it. <laughs> We're going to talk after this. <laughs> um, you know what? Um, I will say this, getting married in our 40s did mean that we kind of had our established habits. Yeah. And, um, and and there, there's a lot to process there because you mentioned that there's, there are those two variables. There is maintaining who you are, yeah. which is, I think, a struggle for anybody in a relationship because I, I think um, a lot of the conversation online from the, 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 the extremists on both sides, male and female, <clears throat> is all about who you are taking precedence over everything else, yeah. right? Like if I'm a man in the manosphere, if the women don't do this and don't do that, then something's wrong with them, nothing's wrong with me. Mm -hmm. 
we gonna hold the women accountable, but not ourselves, right? And then the same thing can happen on that female side. And I, and I don't like any of that, and I don't think that that is conducive at all to a relationship, yeah. because a big part of a relationship is not being so caught up in the ego of who you are that you can't understand submission is really important for a family mm -hmm. because you're committed to something bigger than yourself. Yeah. The yeah. institution must be must always take precedence over the individual in almost every situation. Some situations, obviously, right, your voice needs to be heard, you're important, but you can't walk up in a, in a family situation, you know, with, with some weird alpha male energy like, I am King Kong and everyone must do what I say and all that. No, nobody's going nobody's gonna to want to be around you. Yeah. And, uh, and that was my battle because my father, as wonderful and amazing as he is, um, that was what that was the energy he had. You know, he's a Vietnam veteran, police officer, you know, that kind of guy. And I, I, I saw areas where sometimes it worked, sometimes it didn't. Right. So. Uh, so, yeah, sometimes I have that. <laughs> I, I don't know if I use the word jug or not, you are but I am focused. I'm very focused. And my wife lets me do that. And I ask her to let me do that. I say, hey, look, this babe, this is important to me. And I need you to kind of like, please don't take it personal. I just got to focus. But also, I remember, as a man, I had to sit back and realize I was marrying a juggernaut. Mm -hmm. <laughs> My wife is a badass woman. <laughs> Let's go. I mean, on. And I'm not just saying that. Come on. I, first of all, only 1% of the population has a PhD. Mm. Most PhDs never become full professors. Mm. So you talk about top 10% of the top 1%. Wow. Right? And a black woman on top of it. Wow. Run to Let's go. Let's go. Yeah. Let's yeah, go. I mean, really. Let's go. Oh you know, has, has run, she's run multiple marathons. Yeah. She read 22 books this year. Mm. And they were not short books. One of the books, Valley of the Horses, was long Valley and boring. <laughs> and she read every word. And she's on the Peloton reading her books every day. You know, so, so, so I'll end this by saying that part of me as a man and my evolution as a man meant I had to also understand the times where I get to do the voice thing, mm -hmm. but also sit back and say, look at my wife go. Mm -hmm. Look at that black woman kicking ass and taking mm -hmm. names. And I think we got to do that for our women Absolutely, because our women sir. are so amazing. Absolutely. Absolutely. Period. That's you know, good. so that, and, and I'm talking about African-American women. Everybody yes. talks about women all around the world being better and all. Ain't nobody gone through what black women in America have gone through. Yeah. That's nobody. Good. That's good. And overcoming and shining and Absolutely. killing it. That's That's good. Good. So, so, I, so part of my honor for my wife is an honor to the African-American woman and, and, and what you all have done for us. We don't exist without you. I, and I believe that. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. It's outstanding. All, that. Yeah. all right, so as we wrap up, uh, what is your best money advice for couples? Money advice for couples. Best money advice for couples. <laughs> yes. Somebody, somebody right now, they listening. Or they're watching and they're like, man, like I, you know, I want to get my money right within my relationship. What's the best advice that you got for them? All right. So, guys, you're going to hate this. Uh-oh. <laughs> but you need to hear it. Right? Um, how, ladies, just by show of hand, real quickly, who has a problem with the word submission? Uh-oh. Submission. Submission. If I told you right now. You need to submit to your man. Would you? Would that? Would that? Would that rub you the wrong uh -oh, way? Look, look, more hands, more right, hands. Right. I see it. Little rub. And some might be rubbed the wrong way, but your man is sitting next to you, right? Right, now. right, so right. right. That's you don't want to say that, <laughs> right? Right. So remember that that book, the good book I, I was alluding to before, the Bible, right? So there's, I, I'm not a chapter and verse guy, so I can't quote it like that. But somewhere in there, it said, it said, you know wives, think. submit to your husband. As unto the Lord. That's what it said, right? And men, we have tended to, over the, 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 the millennia, present that to our wives as our, our relationship will be all right and we'll gain the wealth that we want to gain if you would submit to me, mm. right? But if you just go up a little bit in that text, <laughs> just a little bit, just... Just go up a little bit and you will see you will see in that same chapter, you will see it say, submit yourselves one to another. Right? So our success train is unstoppable because I submit my will to my wife and she submits her will to me. 
So we're almost like, where you want to go to eat? 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 I want to eat what you want to eat. I want to eat what you want to eat, right? Now, one would think that you're not getting anything done. Neither of us have a problem with making a decision. We're grown-ass people. But at the moment that I begin to ignore her will, ignore her as a sovereign human being, it is at that point in time that my market begins to crash. Mm. I begin to trend down mm. in that sense. My goal is to trend up. And so remember what an uptrend looks like. An uptrend is a series of higher highs and higher lows. Mm. So you're going to experience higher, you're going to experience lows, mm. just hopefully they're higher than, than what the previous low was. Mm. And the one way that you can do that is through mutual or by a, a bi-directional submission. Oh. Love that. Love that. I, I would say um, give, oh. like really have a heart for giving. You know, growing up in the um, Christian church, um, I wasn't taught anything about money other than to put it in the piggy bank and to tithe, oh. right? So to this day, I do tithe, but I had to change my thought process about tithing. Right. Personally, yeah. I do not tithe to the church anymore. Mm. I find organizations, mm. families, you know, things of that nature, like right. wherever there's a need. Mm -hmm. Right. And I seek the wisdom, Holy Spirit, like who, where, where, should, where should this go? Mm -hmm. And I have just realized that, first of all, whatever I have, I wouldn't have had it mm. if God didn't give it to me. That's Right. So because I used to be of the mindset, man, I can't afford to tithe. But it's like, well, how did you get it in the first place? Right. And so I just encourage people. It doesn't matter. You don't have to be a Christian. Just think from a, a community mindset. Yeah. Right. Pay it forward. Yeah. When you are blessed, just bless somebody else. And let's just create this momentum yeah. that we are really supporters of one another. Yeah. Love that. Yeah, you know. I, I, you wanna, I think I, I want to talk as a couples therapist it's really interesting when I work with couples so after a while I could feel when the couple has like turned a corner and I can tell they don't need me anymore and that's really what I want I want to get to a point where they have something in place where they don't need to pay me you know they can kind of keep it going within themselves and usually when we turn that corner is when okay you're having weekly meetings and I'm here to facilitate your marriage and I'm here to facilitate when we have conversations about how individuals who are married can help each other in their relationship or in their um, in how they communicate they can help each other achieve their goals once that couple gets to that point I know I can start backing off and what happens in those discussions at that point they start to talk about money and money goals and the future because by the time when they come to me they don't want to talk about the future because they don't even want to be with each other anymore they don't know they're like I'm on the fence I could just dissolve this marriage and get rid of him altogether, I don't know. But after doing a lot of the work, that's when money conversations happen because they're planning for the future. And so what I say when I start backing off with my couples is say, keep this meeting going. Mm. You need to have relationship, finance, you need to run your household like you run a business. Mm. And in running a business, you gotta have finance meetings. Yeah. So you need to have regular meetings with your partner because that will strengthen the relationship. Mm. Actually, having those meetings is a signal that that marriage is strong because you see, you have a timeline. Okay, we're gonna buy this house by this date. We're gonna buy this yacht. We're gonna do this airplane. We're gonna have all these sort of on, ideas. <laughs> you know, on, you yacht. see yourself with them. So uh, that's always uh, something that's a good signal yeah. with couples is having, have business meetings, business financial meetings, yeah. please on a regular basis. Yeah. yeah. Love it, love it. Yeah. Right. Well, you know, and it's funny because those, those meetings that, that uh, my wife talks about, those meetings are about far more than money. Mm. Uh -huh. You know, I, that, that's our chance to talk, our chance to connect, our yeah. chance to have a common dream, a common vision, a common goal. Uh, because you know so much about the subconscious mind, uh, we'll talk about things we want to do and be very specific about what it needs to look like. And, and so that, and that's part of the journey. That's part of the ride. And, and the beauty of it is that when you're in sync and you're, you're, you're clicking on all cylinders, it gives you this extra superpower because you know you don't have to do it by yourself. 
you know, you get to do it as a team. And your, your partner, if you, assuming you pick the, the, the right kind of partner, um, your partner can, can carry weight you can't carry, can do things you can't do, can uh, operate in, still, in spaces maybe you have a tough time operating in, and it just makes your life so much better. But, again, when you build that house, you got to manage it properly, invest in the house, maintain the marriage as an institution. That's the most important business you'll ever be associated with. Uh, that is your family. And last point I'll make is that, you know, my father and mother did not have a lot of education. They went to community college and all, and eventually finished college. But um, now that they're older and, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're dealing with the, the things that come with that, uh, it was the investment in the children that has become their retirement plan. Wow. You know, my father called and said he wants to pay off the house. I said, okay, so we wrote a check and paid the house off. My, mo he, my mother Come wanted on, a new check car. Book. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, we just got it done, you know, and, 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 and it was because of how he invested in me. I wasn't his biological son. My father wasn't there. My real father wasn't, but my father that raised me was there. And I, I just said, look, you paid it all forward, man, back in, in the 1980s and whatever when you were putting up with me yeah. and investing in me and spending time with me. So now the children are going to do these things for you. So your yeah. family is a multi-million dollar institution. Mm. Exactly. Whether you know it or not, it's up to you to decide if you're going to extract that value or let it go to waste. Yeah. Yeah. Good. My, my, my young couple, so, give, us, give us your best financial advice. Come on, youngins, so come on. My financial advice is definitely um, feeding off of what you said down there was communicate about what your goals are and talk about money. Because I realize a lot of couples do not like to talk about money. Us being in the credit industry, we were dealing with couples trying to fix their credit, and they have no idea what their wife or what their spouse credit looked like, what their finances were. And we're looking at each other like, wait, what? How do you not know any financial information about your partner? And y'all are trying to reach this certain threshold together, but y'all are really not one because y'all haven't came together when it comes to finances. So one thing we do every year is we have um, a uh, what is it called? Vision boards. So we do vision boards every single year. I recommend everyone do it for it personally and together. So we did two circles, um, and this is how we also keep our identity as well. So we did two interlapping circles. One, um, he had one part of the circle. We shared one in the middle, and then I had the other part. So we had like our individual goals, and then we had our goals as us as partners. Um, and a lot of it had to do with finances as well. So. Um, I think another thing with uh, people who are our age, too, they feel uncomfortable about t um, talking about finances because it's an ego thing with it as well. So um, with us, y'all know about the conversations that's been going on for years, 50-50 household or men providing and women not providing and stuff like that. But for us, it's always been like, you know, we do what we can and it could always change. So there's going to be some times where I'm the breadwinner, sometimes where he's the breadwinner or we both putting in together. And how we look at it is that this is ours together like yeah. it's all about being aligned like yeah. it's if he's winning I'm winning if I'm winning he's winning so just communicate about your goals communicate about what you um the financial expectations y'all have on with each other and just be honest yeah. how you gonna follow that I'm about to say that why y'all keep I, I gotta sit somewhere else next time <laughs> no you but, better um, sit right where you is <laughs> <laughs> but um one thing I realized we did just initially off gate when we first got together, we, we started a Wells Fargo joint account. Like one of the first thing we did was just literally create a, a joint account together. And that's where all our, yeah, when we moved in together, yep, that's where all our bill money went at, our food money went at. So I think that right there kind of broke the ice yeah. for us as far as us talking about money and credit and finance and all the other stuff. But um, again, I, I'm not sure what to say after everything y'all just said. <laughs> but uh, I, I would just say that's a conversation you seriously should have in the beginning because yeah. waiting is like like a volcano. Waiting for a volcano to erupt. Yeah, yeah. No, <laughs> definitely had that credit in that uh, in that money finance uh, conversation. Love it, love it. Round of applause, <laughs> Dr. Alicia Watkins, Dr. Boyce Watkins, Shirley Austin, Shannon Austin. Let's do it. Ratik do it. Round of applause. Real quick. Ash Cash. Yes. Yes. Real quick. Uh, if they, if, if, if they, uh, where can they find you? Real quick. We'll start with Ratik and just go down. Uh, online, Instagram, yeah, yeah. all that uh, stuff. IG, Twitter, whatever you look on TikTok is King Teak, K-I-N-G-T-I-Q underscore. King Teak. And you can follow me on Instagram at underscore Lex the CEO. 
Oh, okay. Uh, uh, follow us at Marriage Inc. M A R R I A G E I N C. Um, it's pretty simple everywhere. My website is voicewatkins.com. And oh, you can find me uh, coaching with Dr. Alicia on Instagram. All right, John, thank y'all so much. We are closing out the vault. We appreciate y'all. Round of applause for our guests again. I want to thank you, Heavenly Father. Take a picture.